Spirit. Amen. The Gospel for this day, the Confession of St. Peter, comes from Matthew chapter 16, beginning at verse 13. Please stand. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Who do people say the Son of Man is? When this question came to the disciples, you know something that that all their responses have in common. Aside from being wrong, of course, John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, prophet, all of them ascribe to Jesus less honor and glory that he deserves. But aside from that, you notice they're all generally positive. They're vaguely complimentary. People were talking about Jesus. They knew who he was. They were interested in him. They were paying attention. They recognized that he was from God. Jesus doesn't even offer a comment on these lesser names given by mere men. He gets straight to the heart of the matter. He says, what about you? Who do you say I am? Clearly, he expected a different and a better answer from his disciples, and he got it. Peter, acting as spokesman for the twelve, said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, and he nailed it. He got it exactly right. The Christ foretold by the prophets, the long-expected one chosen and sent by God to redeem and restore his people. Now, Jesus could have just told them the right answer right off the bat. But by setting it up this way, he was really highlighting the contrast between these two groups, these two answers. There's a difference between them, and there should be, What is it? What's the difference between those who misidentify Jesus and those who really know him? Well, I'll tell you what the difference isn't. It isn't cleverness. It isn't intelligence. It isn't even spiritual insight, because if it were, we would have every reason to doubt that Peter even knew what he was talking about. You know, later in this exact same chapter, Peter showed that he had a deficient knowledge of Jesus. Peter denied what Jesus had come to do. When Jesus predicted his death, he said, never, Lord, this will never happen to you. And on that occasion, Jesus gave him a very different name. He said, get behind me, Satan. And yet here, this same Peter gives this answer, and Jesus says, blessed are you, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. What's the difference? What's the difference between those who get it right and those who get it wrong? The difference is the word revealed by the Father, the word by which we must be saved. And it's not really surprising, is it, that someone could get it so right at one moment and then so wrong so soon after we know that story we know it from experience because even after making a right confession and even while maintaining a generally positive view of who Jesus is our sinful natures will inevitably identify him and evaluate him according to how well he meets our self-identified needs if I need to break a bad habit Jesus is the one who can offer me tips on self-discipline if I need help with how to deal with a difficult person. Jesus is the one who can offer me wisdom and and make me more loving and more patient and more kind. And whatever earthly need I pray for, I can grade Jesus according to how well and how quickly he answers that prayer. 
Of course, Jesus can and does offer wisdom for daily living. Jesus can and does empower us to do the things that please our Father. Jesus can and does provide for our earthly needs, but if I call him good on the basis of only these things, I'm misidentifying him. I'm giving him less glory and less honor than he deserves, and I'm depriving myself of the real comfort that he gives. Because my sinful nature operates according to this lie that it depends on me. That it's all on me to mend this broken relationship with my Father in heaven. And that it's accomplished by the successful completion of a self-determined checklist. And the highest honor that my sinful nature is willing to give to Jesus is the one who tells me what to put on my list. The one who shows me how to do it. That's not what the title Christ means. In the Old Testament, God would send his prophets to anoint those chosen for some specific job, whether it be prophet or priest or king. And Jesus, at his baptism, was anointed with the Holy Spirit. God chose him and anointed him and and announced him as the one who would carry out his plan of salvation. Our prophet, the one who would speak God's word to us. Our priest who intercedes for us before the Father, who offered up himself on the altar of the cross, to pay for the sins of the whole world, and as our king, the one who fights our battles for us, who defeated sin and death, and who reigns at the right hand of our Father in heaven over all things for our good, the Christ, the anointed one, our Savior, the one chosen to carry out God's plan of redemption. And so he did. He gave up everything, even his own life, to forgive us, and to save us. And this is Peter's confession. Jesus, I know who you are. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And then what Jesus said to Peter, I can now repeat to you, you, you who confess the name of Jesus, you are blessed. This isn't a gold star. It's not a pat on the back. It's a simple statement of fact. You're blessed. Not because you're so smart. Because you could not have possibly known this on your own. Neither could your pastors, or your teachers, or your parents, or whoever happens to be standing up here at chapel time on any given day. None of us could have known this if it had not been revealed to us by our Father in heaven. The only reason you know Jesus, the chosen one, is because he chose you. And just as Peter confessed who Jesus is, Jesus confessed Peter as if to say, I know who you are too. You are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. It's through the work that Jesus gave to Peter and the other disciples that Jesus built his church, that Jesus has preserved his word through the centuries, that he has brought this word even to you and made it effective in your heart to bring you into this church that he is building. So who do people say you are? Who cares, really? (laughs) What matters is who Jesus says you are. Who are you? You're his church. You're his body. You're his heart. You're his bride. You're his love. And these gates of Hades, what of them? Gates are built to be strong, to keep enemies out, to keep prisoners in. And these gates are not strong enough to stand up against Jesus when he wants to go through them. And they're not strong enough to keep you in the grave when Jesus calls you out of it. And he will. Because just as he rose from the dead, so also we will rise and we will live there in heaven with him forever. Because he is our prophet, he is our priest, he is our king, he is our savior. He is the Christ, the Son of the living God. In his name, amen.
Please stand for prayer. Almighty God, you inspired Simon Peter to confess Jesus as the Messiah and Son of the living God. Keep your church firm on the rock of this faith, that in unity and peace it may proclaim one truth and follow one Lord, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Yeah.